Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about the tools used in recombinant DNA technology. Now, before going in more detail, let us understand what do you mean by a recombinant DNA. Recombinant DNA is a DNA molecule which is formed by joining two DNA molecules from two different sources. Recombinant DNA is also known as a chimeric DNA. Chimeric is a word which is derived from a Greek word chimera. Chimera means an organism which is formed by different parts of different organisms. So this was about the recombinant DNA. Now let us understand what are the tools used for the recombinant DNA. The first tool used for the recombinant DNA is a donor. A donor is either an organism or a cell from which we get a desired gene. Desired gene is also known as gene of interest. So for example, if we are willing to produce insulin, we will require insulin gene from the human pancreatic cell. Our other requirement is restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes are also known as molecular scissors. These restriction enzymes are actually proteins produced by the bacteria. These restriction enzymes cut the DNA within specific sequence. Our third requirement is DNA ligase. This DNA ligase is an enzyme which joins two fragments of DNA by forming a phosphodiester bond. Our next requirement is polymerase enzymes. These polymerase enzymes are responsible for the synthesis of new strands of DNA molecules on pre-existing nucleic acid templates. These polymerase enzymes are used in polymerase chain reactions, which is used for the amplification of DNA. Our next requirement is cloning vectors. Vector means a vehicle. This vector is used for the transfer of genetic material from one organism to the another organism. Our last requirement is host organism. Host organism is used for the amplification of RDNA and to obtain the product of RDNA. So these are the tools used for the recombinant DNA technology. Now let us understand restriction enzymes in more detail. So as we dis discussed, restriction enzymes are molecular scissors. These restriction enzymes were first isolated by Stewart Lee and Werner Auer in 1963. They isolated these restriction enzymes from bacteria E. coli. Now, let us understand what is the function of these restriction enzymes in bacteria. These restriction enzymes restrict the growth of bacteriophages. These bacteriophages are actually viruses infecting bacteria. These restriction enzymes recognize specific sequence. This specific sequence is known as recognition sequence or restriction site. After recognizing a specific sequence, these restriction enzymes cleave DNA within its length. Restriction enzymes belong to larger class of enzymes which are known as nucleases. There are two major categories of restriction enzymes. First one is restriction exonuclease. This restriction exonuclease removes the nucleotides from the ends of the DNA molecule. The second one is restriction endonuclease. Restriction endonuclease cuts the DNA within specific sequence within the length of the DNA. Now, there are three types of restriction endonucleases. Type 1, type 2, and type 3 restriction endonucleases. The type 2 restriction endonucleases are used in recombinant DNA technology as they can recognize a specific sequence and cut the DNA within its length. Now let us understand about the nomenclature of restriction enzymes. This nomenclature is done by standard procedure with reference to the bacteria from which these restriction enzymes are isolated. For this matter, we require genus name. Genus name is represented by the first letter of the genus name. Our second requirement is species name. Species name is represented by first two letters of the species name. Our third requirement is strain of the organism. And our last requirement is Roman numeral which indicates the order of discovery. Now let us understand this through an example. 
So EGOR1 is an enzyme which is isolated from the bacteria Escherichia coli. So the genus name becomes Escherichia. The species name is coli and the strain is R and the Roman numeral indicates the order of discovery. So this was about the restriction enzymes. Now let us understand about the action of restriction enzymes. So as we discussed that these restriction enzymes recognize specific sequence. This specific sequence are known as palindromic nucleotide sequence. Now what do you mean by a palindrome? Palindrome is a group of letters which form the same word when we read it in forward direction or in a backward direction. For example, when you read this sequence in forward direction, it is G A A T T C. And when you read the sequence in backward direction, it is G A A T T C. So this is palindrome. Now, let us understand how restriction enzymes produce the ends. Now, there are two types of ends produced by the restriction enzyme. The first one is sticky end. Sticky ends are the ends which have free unpaired nucleotides at its end. So, when you have a specific sequence, the restriction enzyme recognizes a specific sequence and cut it within its length. So, ultimately, we will have sticky ends. That means we have free unpaired nucleotides at the ends of the DNA strand. The other end produced by the restriction enzyme is blunt end. Blunt ends don't have free unpaired nucleotides at its end. So when we have a recognition site, restriction enzyme recognizes this recognition sequence and cut it within its length. Ultimately, we will have blunt ends. So, this was all about the action of restriction enzymes. Thank you.